Welcome to another episode in our actuarial Excel tutorial series, where we teach you the essential skills you need in your analytical, actuarial science, or other related career. Today we're going to talk about the offset function. And in this tutorial, it requires knowledge of the row and column function as well, which we'll briefly go over. We'll have a separate tutorial on that as well. So subscribe to my channel and stay tuned for more tutorials. So what is the offset function? From the help file, the offset function returns a reference to a range that a specified number of rows and columns from a cell or a range of cells. And it returns a single cell or a range of cells. Sounds a little bit complicated, but don't worry, we'll go through an example and everything will be much clearer uh, after that. So first off is why do we need to use an offset function? Notice that if we normally just reference cells, it's very easy to reference uh, cells following the same pattern as what you're pointing to. So say for example, you want to have the top row of data here uh, copied down to here. Uh, that in, in the form of a reference. So all you have to do is just equal the first cell that you want and then when you copy it across notice that Excel automatically changes that reference to follow along. Now we can freeze that reference so that when you copy and uh, move that cell around you're not going to have the reference follow. So here we're adding our formula and we press F4 Notice that there's a dollar sign in front of the column and in front of the row. And when we use that formula and copy it across, notice that uh, the cell reference doesn't change. It still stays referenced to B2. And what that uh, dollar sign does is it freezes at that column and or uh, row. So notice that if we, for example, only did the dollar sign in front of uh, the B, and we copy that in the box. Notice that the column doesn't change, but the rows change. And vice versa, if we have the dollar sign from the row instead, and we copy that in the box, notice that the columns change, but the rows don't change. That's just a brief intro on uh, the references and how to have the references move and not move. And we'll go into why that's useful for our current tutorial later. But for now, let's go into back into this example of if you want to reference and copy a, a range that references another range, and you want that to move along with it, it's fairly easy as long as it's the same pattern. Notice this is just across, and this is just across. But now, what if you want this uh, diagonal ra uh, range instead? You can uh, do this and just uh, manually select which range you want, but that's pretty tedious, especially as your ranges get bigger. And also you want to do it systematically because when you have uh, range references like this, it's hard to follow along. For example, if this range was the in incorrect uh, reference, uh, someone who's reviewing it might not be able to see that. Uh, if the range is big enough and it doesn't have data and it's a lot of different moving parts. So by using dynamic range, by using the offset function, it helps mitigate a lot of those issues. Now let's put that into play and see what happens. All right, so I set up the formula here to use the offset function. And the offset function uh, takes as arguments the starting reference point, the number of rows to offset by, the number of columns to offset by, and optionally the height and width as well. Now let me do a quick explanation on what that means and then I'll explain the example formula that I used. So the reference point is where we start, uh, what's our reference point for the later on offset? It's sort of like our starting position. The rows input is how many rows down uh, do we want to shift from that original starting point? And the columns input is the number of columns right that we want to shift from that original input. So here we have offset with the reference starting point at B2, 
which is at the top here, the row offset, which is how many rows down do you want to move from the starting position, it's 7 minus column. So this column is a function that just returns the current column in uh, the spreadsheet. So here, column is going to return 2 because the column number here uh, just follows the A is 1, B is 2, C is 3, D is 4. And 7 minus column is the row input. And then 0 is the column input. So for convenience sake, I also put in the offset row and offset column uh, formulas into here just so you can see for each cell that we're going across here uh, what rows and columns we're offsetting by. So noticing that we're offsetting by zero for the column. And the reason for that is that in our formula here, notice that only the two is fixed, the b is variable. So as you move this formula across, uh, at the starting position is the 2012 uh, row for each of these columns. So we don't need to offset the columns because the starting position is already moving. But we do want to offset the number of rows. And since we're moving the rows up every time, so notice here we're uh, looking at the 9065 on row 7, the 8251 on row 6, the 9698 on row 5. So we're moving up in rows. So it's a little bit counterintuitive, but instead of adding to the row input that makes it go more and more down, we're actually making that row and input number smaller to make it go more and more up. So notice here that 7 minus column, 7 minus 2 is 5. So we start off at B2, and then we go down 5 rows. So 1 row, 2 row, 3 row, 4 row, 5 rows. And for here, we start at C2, and we go down 4 rows. 1, 2, 3, 4. And notice here, we start at D2, and we go down three rows, one, two, three. So it's a bit of a trick with the column uh, function where we essentially make it uh, decrement one for every column that we shift across. And as you can tell here, these are the rows to offset by, and it just follows this diagonal along. So it's a very useful function when you want to reference uh, cells dynamically. In the beginning, I said that the row and column uh, input arguments are how many rows down to go and how many columns right to go from your input function. But you can actually make it go up and make it go left as well. And you do that by simply using negatives in your input. So let's expand this over uh, one column and then expand this formula over as well. Now, what would this uh, cell reference? So this cell is starting off at H2, and then it's taking a negative 1 as the row offset. So where does that go? That goes actually goes to here. And we can simply test that by, say, let's put in 50 here. And notice that this represents the 50. So even though we started at H2, we can go up by simply using a negative 1 in the offset row argument. And similarly, we can actually make it go left by using the offset column as well. So I'm just going to change this to use the bottom row and column offsets. And now let's say we change this to negative 1. This is says 72 because we're starting at cell H2, but we're going up 1 and left 1 to get to this cell. So hopefully that uh, makes sense. We'll go into a few more examples, but hopefully this will give you a general idea of how powerful the offset function can be, especially when used in conjunction with the column and row uh, functions. Be sure to subscribe to my channel and also share to show support. I appreciate you watching and spreading knowledge is why I do this. So I hope you enjoyed watching it as well. Now we're going to go into a few more examples as an appendix. So feel free to continue watching.
So let's say instead of the latest diagonal, we want the second latest diagonal. So I just put in a uh, second latest. And then here, uh, I'm just going to change this instead of 7 minus column, I just do 7 minus column minus 1, and then copy that across. And poof, we have the second latest diagonal. The 7141 here, 7141, 7516, 8632. Notice here that, so what happened here? Here we're referencing the second latest, but notice that there's no second latest diagonal at this point, so it just references the top. So this is a word of warning to always be careful of where you're referencing and to be aware of uh, the extremities of your ranges because that's usually where the formula tends to have wonky effects. So we just delete those out and this takes your second latest diagonal. And if you want third latest diagonal, quite easy, just do minus three, copy it across. Again, uh, get rid of those because there's no third latest diagonals but now you have your third latest diagonal there, which is here. Actually, that's your fourth latest diagonal. Uh, sorry, because I did uh, from one to negative three. And that is your second latest diagonal across. So you can have the row and columns in an offset area like this, so you can kind of see where it's going. Or you can just incorporate these formulas directly into the argument itself, uh, which I did earlier in the lesson. The, the upside to having it uh, split out is that it's a little bit easier to follow along for someone who's not particularly used to the offset function, for example. The downside is it does require an extra uh, two columns or two rows to have that uh, extra information. And you can put it into the function itself, which makes it a little bit harder for someone to follow along if they're not used to the offset function, but on the upside is that it's a little bit cleaner as well.